Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Western Chester. Glad you're here this morning. Got a special guest here and a good show lined up. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and the hardworking crew. We're looking at a high today of 83, a low of 64. Water temperature is right at 85 degrees. We're looking at a situation where uh, it's going to be a Monday moon forecast. We always want to know when that full moon of October is. All full moons are special, but one in October there's always things that sort of just comes out at you. And there's a lot of things going on in nature. And it's going to be this coming Sunday, October the 9th, will be our full moon. So right now we're waxing up. And uh, so this weekend, Friday especially, is going to be a good day to just uh, don't go to work or anything. Call your boss and say, Coach Chester said you're off today. And, and just head for the woods or head for the water. But uh, make sure you clear it first with him. <laughs> our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a... Uh, uh, decent tide today. Uh, we've got a, a high at 247 and a low at uh, 322. Uh, the wind, I don't have the wind direction, but we'll take a, it should be a nice day outside, hopefully. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back and welcome to our fellow outdoorsman, Ken Good morning. Paramore. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good to have you. Glad, Glad to be Good to have back. you last week with Ronnie, and we did. We didn't have time to do a full show, so we're going to catch up on a lot of stuff. So we're glad. Yeah, to have you. Um, we didn't have a chance to cover a lot of the banquet information, yeah. but uh, most important part was giving him a little recognition and, and paying awesome. tribute to what he has done for us over the years, and and uh, it was it was perfect that we were able to put it together and yeah. have him here where we could do it publicly, if you will. Or, that was you know, special. In front of your audience with a show his, that his stories are amazing, aren't they? The stories he tells. Oh my gosh! Like, like I say, you can't imagine going offshore. To be in a hundred foot of water, you've got to be nine or ten miles off, probably. In a fifteen foot with a thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five. And in those days, they were two-stroke engines, <laughs> and it loaded with dive gear. Oh yeah. And you know the spear guns were as big as this table, probably. Uh, and he said, yeah, well, yeah, and, you know, all the stuff heavy. And three or four or five of them probably went in it. Yeah, and he said on the way back he had to sit on top of the fish to get back in. <laughs> so, um, I meant to ask him, um, where did they launch from? I don't know. I think off the beach. I think would that, that, would that's a good to, question. Because but, to drive from any ramp, that, that's another treacherous journey in a 15-footer. Yeah, back then you could drive, if you had a Jeep and all, you just drive over yeah, to Sand Dune. Yeah, and just, launch, and launch, launch right there. At the right. end of Highway 79. So, Anyway, what, what a legendary story. Incredible. <laughs> so we're glad to be able to share it with you. Now, we, uh, we're going to talk turkey today. We're going to talk breast snapper. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about. But let's, let's talk turkey first. Yeah, I wanted to uh, briefly just, you know, bring it up that the success that we did have this year. And um, we finally got together. We had a meeting with NWTF rep. And uh, Stan, you know, is our treasurer. So mm -hmm. he, he crunched the numbers. and after we paid our bills because all those banquet items auction items have to be paid for mm -hmm. and there's a cost for those we have to pay the venue mm -hmm. we have to pay the the food the the cook and they went and bought all the food mm -hmm. you have to pay the auctioneer you have to pay the <laughs> raffle ladies i mean er, yeah. so you do have expenses to put yeah. one on you know but and let me interrupt right now that the raffle guy i mean the auctioneer and the raffle they all do a good job they yeah do, do. and and the reason we use them is because they do banquets all over so they're used to the process mm -hmm. the rd the regional director which is the nwtf guy that we work with is used to working with those people okay so they kind of know so really all i say is i want an i need an auctioneer and one or two auction girls uh -huh. and he handles that and sets it up you could find somebody locally but they don't know the process. And right. with the amount of people that's trying to buy stuff from them, the and, line yeah. and, and then... And it's a specialized audience too with, with, their, with hunting and trucking right. stuff and all. It's not just a general. And thing. some want to pay with cash, some are credit cards, some have their bid numbers and mm -hmm. some don't. So, and they make it flow as best yep. because you, you, know, you just don't have the time to be indecisive or not know what 
the cost of the packet is or how much the tickets are or what this ticket goes for here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a process. But anyway, after we crunch the numbers, drum roll, <laughs> we um, grossed $46,829. Wow, what a night. $46,829. After we paid our bills, we netted for NWTF $23,720. Wow. We came in at about 51% um, net to gross, or okay. gross to net. And so your bottom line is, is what they look for, right. we, or we look for. And if it's 51% or better, you get into what they call a golden gobbler club. Okay. For the chapter. The chapter is a golden gobbler chapter because any, any amount that you net that is plus is a good thing. But when you get 50% or better, that indicates that you, you not only manage your expenses, mm -hmm. you know, like we could have we could went out and found a caterer for $50 a plate, yeah. or, you, you know, or $30 a plate, yeah. whatever, but that cuts into what we're trying to do to give back, right. you know, to the environment. So, um, and we've done it now, this is six years in a row, we've done over 50%. Wow. So we, we're still batting a thousand on the Golden Gobbler. Congratulations. Um, recognition, Golden if you Gobbler. will. So that's what they call it if a chapter, that's good. you know, generates more than 50% net to gross. My gross FSU buddies can identify because they have a group called the Golden Chiefs. That's the ones up here. So now we mm -hmm. have the Golden Gobblers <laughs> right here. <laughs> we get a little pen that says Golden Gobbler on it. And, uh, but uh, the money goes back into um, the, the national coffers. The state of Florida gets percentages back. Mm -hmm. Then um, the agency, FWC, and the, the Forest Service, there's a match. And then that's what we get back to put into our wildlife management areas here in the state. It doesn't okay. go to any private land management. Right. It's all, all public land, and as I've said before on here, the board meets, the biologists give us a list of priorities that they need done throughout the state, and we decide where the money goes and how to divvy it out so it's not all concentrated in one area. Oh, cool. Um, so it's, that sounds good. It, it's a process. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and talk a little bit more about this and talk about some rest snapper coming up this weekend, so we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. See with Ken Paramore, a very familiar face here in Pan Outdoors. Been with us, been with us since about I got started, really, off and on. And uh, we appreciate you coming on now. He's in the capacity of uh, president of the uh, local club of our NWTF and also uh, an avid outdoorsman. But one, getting back to the bank, we're going to talk just a couple more minutes about it, then we're getting the rest snapper. But one of the things that impressed me that night, y'all had some kids up there, you had a little kid division. Yeah, and, and, and thanks to our, our regional director, because I had already planned some goodie bag giveaways for the kids there. And what we normally do is call them up, give them a ticket, and then we just have a kids only drawing. And I had three bags already made up with, had some turkey calls in it, some hats and some stuff and some bags, but our NWTF director, he brought two BB guns. Yeah. So we added that to the, and so we ended up having about five drawings for the kids. And so what he did, you know, we did, we call them all up front, like if they're under under 16 or something. Yeah, yeah. And they are, we give them each a ticket and then we put all the tickets in and we, we drew just for them only. And some of their eyes, you know. Oh, they, <laughs> I was going to get at that. Look on their face now, they were just flat out excited. <laughs> they really were. Because it was for them, you know. And, <laughs> and, and, and for five of them anyway, they won something. I know it. And, you know, and so the, they got a positive influence, a yeah. good taste in the mouth on, on that yeah. situation. Yeah. Now, uh, getting back to the control with the money going all across the state of Florida, the, the FWC biologist sort of has a list of what areas to do. Right. Um, after the money is get back to the states, then the every state board has a meeting we call it a super fund meeting because the monies are de designated as super fund money. That's, okay. what they, that's what they call them. So the NWTF biologist and the FWC biologist, about May, April or May, they are, have a deadline. They submit to us um, projects throughout the state that, 
and a dollar amount affixed to their projects. And then they present it, they have a deadline, they present it to us when our board meets in every August. We go over the list that they've all submitted. They've all, they've gotten together and prioritized their list mm -hmm. from top to bottom. And usually there's 30 or, or 35. Wow. And then we hash out the monies and and are conscious of spreading it out across the state, which they do a good job of too, because they know you don't want to put it all in one area. Right. And some areas need more than others. And some areas are suitable turkey habitat and some aren't mm -hmm. a, as much. So we decide where the money goes um, through the course of that next fiscal year. Okay, I know up here we've had Appalachian Golden National Forest, Blackwater, all kind of areas have been used. Yeah, I, think, I think Pine Log has gotten Pine some Log. in the past. Um, yeah. any, any Florida, management area is eligible based on their biologists submitting requests for work. It could be control burns, roller chopping, mulching, um, you know, food plots, they're, they're not sustained, you yeah. know, so we, the hunters do that, of course, and most of that's on private, but um, it goes back into public land. Good deal, good deal. And our, and our last thing, the calendar. Let's right. I wanted to real, real briefly for those of you who purchased this 22 calendar, um, some have won and some obviously haven't. I haven't. <laughs> but we're going to do this again this year. Okay. At the end of this year for next year, a 23 calendar. We're working on it now. We're going to do the same thing. It's based on the Florida lottery. Mm -hmm. Pick <gasps> three for the day. There's a whole list of 52 guns. It's still going on now, so everybody still has a chance to win a gun. Um, we've had some winners and we've had some that didn't because um, that number didn't come up that week. So we've kept those guns and they're going to go into this year's, the next calendar. Okay. So it'll offset. We had to buy 52 guns up front. Wow. The, you know, for this calendar. Yeah. But for the next one, what didn't, and we're running the, probably 50 to 60 percent winner. So okay. we've, we've got leftover guns that are going to go back into so we won't have as many to buy next year and then we, could, we can raise more money. Plus we didn't, we got started late last year, late in the, in the, the fall, and we didn't sell all of them. We sold probably between 700 and 800 and we had a thousand. Okay. So that's what 200 and some that they didn't sell. So if they got drawn, yeah, the they weren't in somebody's hands. So when hands. are you going to start for 2023? We're hoping to have them all printed up and done next month. Okay. Or actually, this month we're in October, October now. Right. Yep, and I'll probably start um, early November before Thanksgiving, and then of course all of December. So I've got a little bit of a head start than I did last year. Yeah. But I sold over 60, 65 alone last wow. on this one, and we statewide we didn't sell all thousand. Okay. Of them. okay. But we are going to do it again if anyone's interested, and and if anyone's interested in. And being a sponsor page, we're out, we're selling sponsor pages where you get on the entire month. Okay. Uh, it's mostly businesses, but individuals have bought them, and they're a $1,000. And the drawing, is that Wednesday drawing? Is that what it was? Wednesday pick three evening Okay, Wednesday drawing. pick three. That's interesting. So like crime shoppers and all of that. Yep, that one went good. Um, and we, we notify yeah. everybody yeah. the winner, so nobody's going to get missed. Yeah. Could you imagine winning one one day on Crime Stoppers and the next week winning one on the camera? Well, we had one of your viewers won twice on, uh, on this one. On, on that one? Yep. So won twice on Crime Stoppers, yep. won twice on yep. that one. See, it pays to watch Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It does. All right. So, anyway, okay, if anybody wants to join uh, Bay, Bay County Long Beaters, uh, what do they need to Just do? Just get in touch with me or Stan, or we have a Facebook page, Bay County Long Beards. Mm -hmm. um, we could always use help in, a, in you know, in our yep. committee. The more people that we can interact with, the more people know people that can get more people in the door yeah. for us. Yeah, and you don't necessarily have to be in Bay County. You could be down in another county, come no. in, wherever you want to, right. just come join us. And, and uh, it, it, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. We've got yeah. a couple other chapters through the Panhandle. They're all welcome to come on and talk about it too. So we're all in it for the same, same reason to help our environment, help our outdoors. That's right. Okay, we're going to take a final break, and I promise you now, next break, <laughs> we're going to talk about these big red snapper. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. We've got to move right along. We've got a lot of stuff to go over. We've got a case of the, one of the, well, we've got a case that's very interesting. So let's look at fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers today. Uh, 6.10 to 8.10 this morning and this evening from 
641 to 841. Okay, Red Snapper real quick. Open up this weekend, a fall season. 7th and 8th. Um, every Saturday, Sunday, I believe it's through October. Mm -hmm. We get into November. There's, I think it's Veterans Day mm -hmm. weekend mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving. Believe it or not, Thanksgiving weekend is uh, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's the day after Thanksgiving plus the Saturday, Sunday. The same with Veterans. It's uh, whatever day Veterans is on, it's a three-dayer. But the other was our weekends all, yeah. th all through October. Yeah, that'd be on a Monday. So we're talking on the days, but are you, you excited about it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you always have weather, yeah. uh, you know, and you also got to juggle it between getting ready for hunting season because archery opens um, October 22nd, 23rd, 25th, somewhere in there. So it's, it's a, a juggle. The only thing I really don't like about it is it's on weekends. Yeah. And I don't like to fish on weekends at the boat ramps. I know. <laughs> but that time of year would be less. Yeah, it would be a lot know, less than um, in July. A lot less. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, hopefully, there hasn't been any pressure on anything. So, if we have good weather, there'll be some good fish caught. Plus, the storm we had is going to blow them up here. Like the old timer said, it's going to push some up here close to shore. They always say the fishing's good after a yeah. storm. Yeah, so um, it's going to be interesting. There'll be some, there'll be some nice for a snapper caught. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk more about that too as the week goes on. But right now, let's, you brought a case, uh, one of these cases. I did. You know, we talked, we talked for, I don't know, a year or two now about digging up some old cases. Yeah. And well, 35 I, years in law enforcement, FWC, you've, yeah, you've had some experiences. Yeah. All, you know, three or four duty stations all over the state. But I found one. I went, I went digging through some boxes, and I, I got a bunch of them. So it's going to take us a lot of time to get through them. But I, I found one that is of interest here in Bay County, and it, it happened um november of 1999 okay okay so i and a precursor everybody on here doesn't like bears and i and i agree but this happened when bears were still a threatened species okay. no, nobody liked them then either they don't like them now this was before we had a hunt so they were fully protected we got a call about a dead bear and we're obligated to go investigate right. it. So, with that said, okay. we got a call uh, October 27th about a dead bear that was laying on the side of a tram road um, outside of, uh, just to the west of uh, Star. Yeah. So I went down there and there was a dead decomposed bear in, a, in front of a gate into a hunting club and the head was gone, the paws were gone, the front shoulders were gone. Mm -hmm. And it was about halfway decomposed. Mm -hmm. And it's just laying there. So I got to looking at it, I put gloves on and trying to, f to find out. And I went into where the shoulder was, or, or behind where the shoulder was, and I moved some of the hair away. And there was a, a broadhead um, cut into the skin. I said, oh, okay, it wasn't a roadkill. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it had a broadhead. It had been shot with a bow. Laying next to it was a, a two before board that was painted gray that had blood on it and had some rope tied to it. That's all we had. So um, we talked about it and didn't have any leads, so we figured we needed the media. So Stan, Stan was working. Stan did a um, news release asking for information. A couple of days went by. We got information that somebody had seen somebody showing off a paw and a head, um, but the information was really vague. The person had to be anonymous. So we went where the person was supposed to have been working. We, we went to the parking lot and took every tag number in that parking lot, ran them, came back to a name that was given to us, that was close to the name given to us. We went to the house where that residence was, um, and lo and behold, there's a pile of wood in the, out by the street to be picked up of two befores painted with gray paint oh. that they had torn out the front porch railing. And so, and then there was two vehicles in the driveway and one of the tags was, was one of the tags that we ran at, it was, it was in a school parking lot where it, had, where, where it was that day. Uh -huh. Anyway, we went and did some interviews. We found out that um, the boy was in a lease. He was archery hunting. A bear came out before dark went to his feeder, he shot the bear with a bow, climbed down, went to his, his buddy that was hunting with him, told him 
Uh, he had shot a bear that we needed help. They went and called a third guy, showed up out there, met him. They drugged the bear out of the woods, brought the bear home, took pictures with the bear. They cut up the paws and, and took the back strap out and um, posed for pictures. We, we got admissions and confessions from all of them. Okay. And um, we made three arrests. But the bottom line here was it went from a dead bear carcass with, yeah. a, with a board that with some help from the public, yeah. um, we put the rest of it together by, it happened to be at the house where the front porch and that board they brought, they used that board as a drag to drag the bear out of the woods. Okay, that's what it was. And put him in the bed of the truck. What great police work, law enforcement work, to piece that <laughs> well, together, and that's awesome. I was over investigations at the time, and me and another investigator were the two lead that worked at State Attorney's Office did great. We had good fines. Uh, the bull was fined over $1,000. Oh, good. Um, even though it was a bear, um, we did oh, our yeah. thing. Very good. That's great. So. We'll, you're going to, these cases in the past, we're going to, each time you come on, bring one like that's interesting. That's, uh, I, when I went through books the other day, I, deer, right. alligators, okay. you know. All right. Well, Ken, thank you so much. We covered a lot of information. Thank Good you. Shoulder. Thank you. Good job. Listen, thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We always appreciate our viewership, appreciate the feedback. Do something good today for your fellow man. You have a great day, and God bless. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.